Can you recall a directing, producing, acting job where not only did it teach you the most, but you saw someone that you said, I want to emulate myself after this person. I like the way they handled the crew. I like the way they spoke to someone. Or it could be a negative, and of course we won't, we don't have to mention names right. either way. But you knew in that moment, like this is actually a life lesson. You just didn't maybe know it. Well, maybe you knew it in the moment, maybe you didn't. But it was something that really changed you in terms of the way you wanted to approach something. Mm -hmm. Could have been the director that asked you, that challenged you mm -hmm. really, really did challenge yeah. you. Like, what are you doing? You know, you're young, yeah. but time goes um, fast. You know, uh, there's been a lot of that, I think. First person that jumps to my mind is when I was starting out. I was as a um, as a driver on the set um, on this movie called A Home of Our Own with Kathy Bates and Tony Bill was the director and Tony Bill was an actor and a while a long time ago and then started directing and so uh, what I loved about him was he just he came on set and like everybody was just this it was just peaceful like he didn't. You know, it was like a lot of chaos with kids. There was like eight kids at times, and and he was able to just just handle everything with ease. And he was he was really great, and like um, uh, he knew everybody's name. And I thought that was just like you know he saw me at the you know after like week two or something, and said you know I opened he opened the van door. Good morning, Mark. Got in, got in. I was like, wow, he knows my name. He knows people's names, and. So that was always important for me. And so I saw that for myself as something that I wanted to do, either as an actor or director or producer. It's like, I wanted to know people's name. I wanted to know what they did. I wanted to make sure I said hello. And, um, and then the next one was when I was doing a small part as a bartender in Ocean's Eleven, opposite George, uh, Brad Pitt, but George Clooney was there that day. And he has, in the scene, he walks behind Brad Pitt. And that day was, I was walking just from hair and makeup to the set George was just coming and he was walking with his assistant and uh, some grip or something. He said, hey, Tony, how's your, how's your son doing? He's like, it. you know, he's like, ah, oh, good, good. All right, good, good. Hey, how you doing? I'm George, you know, introduced himself to me as I was, you know, was walking with the AD. And, um, and it just like, that was something that, and I stayed on set and watched him and Brad, you know, do a scene together afterwards. And I saw him take, a, you know, a Mountain Dew, I can, and as he's talking to the wardrobe guy, he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, great, great. Oh, you need me? And they walked away, and, he, and the wardrobe guy looked down, and he had poured the, the, the whole Mountain Dew on his shoe while he was talking to him. And then he was like this practical joker. But he knew everybody's name. He was like talking to everybody. I mean, whether it was the Grip Electric, Craft Service, me, some guy that was coming in for one day. And I thought, that's the kind of, you know, that's what I want to have. I want to be that kind of a, you know, a leader in on a movie. And so in every all of my productions, I'm really trying, whether it's just one day, and I do that even when I'm doing art directing on commercials or, you know, a prop master still, I'll do commercials and stuff. And I'll, I know everybody's name. And at the end of the, you know, job, I'm saying goodbye to everybody. And it just, it just helps. It just like, it just makes the, the, the projection better. It makes the day go by easier when I'm asking for, you know, uh, an extension cord, you know, I know who the person to ask. I know the right person. I know his name. You know, it's just that little bit. And we're like, oh, we're a team, not just, hey, you, can you? And um, and that definitely makes a difference when I'm directing. I just did this movie in New Mexico and uh, the crew had all worked together before. And so I kind of was the, you know, it was just the DP and I were the only ones from LA. Everybody else was all local. And and for us to come in and just, you know, even on the prep days to see how they work and how they do stuff, you know, it was different than the way I was used to, but I was able to, you know, adapt and find ways to, you know, get what I needed and give them what they needed for me. And, um, and by the, you know, the end of the first week, it was like, oh, this is like, just like it is, you know, and I was getting those sort of communications from like the line producer and production manager saying, wow, you really, you know, put us all in our places at times and yet you know we see how hard you're working like that was part of my thing I was like I'm gonna work just as hard you know and that was the production designer would had told me out of the first week he goes um, he came to set and he said so never had anybody never had a director be in bed after me sending me emails and <laughs> up before me responding to emails wow and um and that was what that said well that's my job i should be the one first one in last one out I should, that's that's what i should do 
And so because of that, he was doing, he was willing to work extra hard. People were willing to, because everybody's on the same, same thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm just because I'm the director, I'm, you know, some, the, the boss. It was more of like, at least I'm the guy that has to like say yes, no, yes, no, yes, cut. <laughs> you know, I have to be that guy and I have to be responsible for that. So beyond that, if you can be the best at your job and you bring your, everybody's the best at their jobs and like, then I can win. So that was something I saw Tony and George do is like, I felt like they were, and then a lot of other directors too. Soderbergh does that. I mean, Soderbergh hardly even gives direction to his actors. He's really, you know, he communicates with them, but it's, you know, he's casting the actor that's going to deliver the thing. So it's more about the scene and what they're talking about, but he doesn't go, yeah, give me a little bit more. He doesn't do any of that stuff. It's, it's more camera work. It's more about, let me try something else. Let's do it, whatever you want. And same thing, respecting crew people. And, you know, so that's sort of what was my sort of inspiration to, and I feel like that fits my DNA as, as a person anyway. I'm there to you know, that's my dad's like that. My dad knows people and knows everybody in town and wants to help people. So I think as a director, that was something. And even when I was acting, even on Van Away, it's like being that guy that's like, I co-wrote it, I'm producing it, I'm, you know, I'm in it. Like it's, I have to be the guy that's leading it. And if I have a crummy attitude, everybody else is going to have a crummy attitude. So I really had to step up. And even when it was not going the way I wanted it to go, I had to be positive. I had to, you know, find solutions rather than where you have problems, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been interesting. So you're like you and the two, you're the L.A. guys that come yeah. up, you know, oh, these two L.A. And then trying to fit in where they've already established mm -hmm. relationships and all that. And yeah, they had certain way to check off boxes and certain things. This is how we do this thing. It's like, really would love if we could, you know, can we look at a couple more locations because this isn't quite what we had talked about. and. You know, and that's tough for me because I want everybody to like me. So if they, you know, if they say, no, that's it. then I had to still go, okay, but can we have just one more? Is there just like one more location that we can look like? Because this is just, it's not fitting, you know, sort of my references and I'm, it's all about story. So I'm trying to explain. It's like the story. If she just shows up to this place, it's not that scary. And if it's, this place is way too scary. And we're all the audience. Why is she walking in there? So there's like this fine line, like, Okay, and then once we found we found a building and it was like, you know, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it was closer than these other two. And I thought, okay, I'll give a little bit so that we can, you know, and so a little give and take. And so it was like a nice little thing where they're like, okay, well, we appreciate you giving us, we know this is not exactly it. We'll see what we can do about this car that you want. And so there was always that sort of negotiation, you know, 